All right, so, um, yeah, uh, uh, Wardrobe Plays uh, World War II asked me if uh, I had any um, uh, suggestions, uh, you know, for general reference uh, books for the Great War and also uh, any books for uh, maps and whatnot. And I was thinking, wait a minute, this actually is going to be a good thing for me because I keep getting, uh, in a weird way, when I'm looking, um, you know, I ha I, there's no way I have to stay in the shot kind of thing due to the fact there's just, that, like I was saying, too many books maybe to bring back and forth uh, onto the tabletop, but in a weird way, I don't think I've got a, an awful lot of books. Um, I'm going to keep on trucking that way. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll start off with my general reference books, um, maps and stuff like that, and then go from there. And then if, you know, uh, people can just shut off and you don't see the rest of the books, but I'm going to keep on going with them. Uh, I would say the best way to look at it is the ones I'm using probably often, if you can see, are uh, book, they'll probably be bookmarks because they're just, um, I'm hopping back and forth to grab uh, bits of information. But um, the books probably I'm going to show you right off the bat are the books that I um, picked up um, rather early when I was getting into World War I uh, and the Great War and all that. Um, <clears throat> So maybe that's a good indication of probably the way the way I was uh, I placed value on the books of trying to get some information into my head. Uh, the first one for sure is this one we've uh, done it on the um, on the live stream uh, often. I was uh, doing actually one map a a week. I should go, maybe go back to this. Um, there's different versions of this. This is a pretty early version. I think Manry Mike has a, a later version, probably in, in better quality or whatever. Um, the First World War Atlas by Martin Gilbert, a fantastic resource. Uh, it's just maps and, uh, you know, there's also like a ton of thematic maps uh, and he breaks it off, breaks it into sections. So it's not just uh, um, like by year, but there'll also be like a section of uh, the war in the air, the war, you know, on the sea uh, or in, in the sea, um, you know, under the sea kind of thing, um, that type of stuff. Um, Oh, look at this. Trench warfare. I think, yeah, we brought that up. Uh, trench warfare, the, the cost, uh, rail communications, the central powers, uh, on and on and on. What a, an amazing book. Um, another good book for Atlas type uh, stuff. I know there's a better version of this as well now. Uh, this is by Michael Nyberg. I've used it often and um, scanned some images. Don't worry, I put the copyright thing on the thing or whatever, but I've used it on the live streams as well and we've taken a look at this and yet again it also breaks it da breaks the great war into sections like like when you see here the balkans and then we'll go into like a chronology of what happened there but then there's, there's also uh later on like um you know here there's the eastern front and all that so on and so forth but as we get on to I mean, hopefully you can see some bits but i mean i'm trying not to get too much glare but this is the way i have to grab the books uh, and then the wider war and then gets on yet again with the air power and, and naval power uh, fantastic book uh, I will say this that mo before you know, I grab on to the next book most of my books I've picked up um, from a thrift store here a used books uh, the used bookstore at the, the Canadian War Museum and um, booksellers either either through uh, eBay uh, such as World of Books which I think uh, uh, they're American, and my favorite right now is Awesome Books. Um, but maybe I'll pop them into, into a list uh, thing later. There was another one I was talking about uh, earlier on, uh, on the live stream, Crowns in the Gutter uh, by Ted Racer. What a good book. I didn't realize um, how often I've actually been using it, uh, especially for a newbie with me uh, with Hex Encounter. At the very beginning, he gets into... Um, you know all this stuff about uh, how to take a look at, like map notes and so on and so forth and it's uh well he says a strategic analysis of world war one uh i wouldn't say it's chock full of maps but uh he's got got them good and i just like the way he uh speaks or writes um and um i like the way he's broken down the war it's i like it good yeah i would highly recommend this one Ah, uh, geez, these ones, let's see if we click, no, these are just more um, general, you know, the reference, uh, whatever, so I'm going to take a look at that. Um, let's take a look at some other, yeah, these ones here I picked up uh, for a song at the used bookstore at the Canadian War Museum. I'm not going to bring them all out here, but 
you get the idea. So they're uh, the history of World War One, and it's uh, Edward. I don't know if it's all. Uh, oh yes, uh, 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 the foreword is by uh, Dennis Showalter, uh, fan, really good uh, historian. And uh, as you can see here, they've all been uh, broken down. Um, like I said, I got these for a song. I was super happy to get them. Um, I don't use them as much, as often as I thought I was going to uh, use them, but um, they're still good. Obviously, you know, let's take a quickie look. Let's see what I was looking at. So, oh yeah, yeah, I scanned that map in. I think I was using the other again for the live stream to show the differences of, um, as we were talking about the Sanusi campaign up uh, up there in North Africa and uh, the Darfur campaign and whatnot um, very quickly. I've done a very good job of it, to be honest with you. Oh, there's Jan Smuts over there. But, uh, yeah, if you can pick these up, I got these for a song. Like I said, I think I picked up, uh, got the entire set for $30 Canadian, which is just almost, I would say, unheard of. Uh, now, let's get into the general uh, reference books, I guess, if you want to call it. Like I said, I've been trying to... Um, should go over there but uh trying to section them off so like over here uh these books are more what i would say i'm not going to bring them out really is um you know diplomacy type stuff like you can see here's paris 1999 there's another mcmillan book uh the war that ended peace this one's an awesome book uh i've only read the uh, the bit on the great war i think there's two um i think this person has two uh two things uh, what if, but um, yeah, I said I was getting into the general reference, but I, this got, got me sidetracked. And he's got a whole section, uh, actually the editor uh, does it, does the bit on the Great War. It is really, really neat. Like what happens if, uh, you know, they really had stuck it through with the Schlieffen plan and, and so on and so forth. It's, yeah, really good. Uh, this one I just picked up recently, uh, The Road Less Travel, The Secret Battle of the End. Uh, in the Great War, 1916, 1917. I'm really fascinated by all this back. Oh my God! You should listen to the, or been. Uh, I think they they will actually pop it up on YouTube. Um, the the talk I was there yesterday about um, German intrigues and trying to get um, um, uh, basically the, uh, the the Americans and the Mexicans more involved uh, with each other than uh, getting the Americans involved with the Great War. It was pretty neat. Um, so that one, here's another fantastic, uh, for me anyways, uh, Chronology of the Great War. Um, it's obviously no maps or anything, but it is just incredible. And at the end there, the index and the bibliography and the notes and everything is just incredible. Really, really good. You know what, actually I thought is, uh, oddly enough, I didn't realize this. I just picked this up kind of like for fun. Uh, the Dictionary of World War One. Holy moly, I brought it. I was like, you know, maybe you should actually show all your books. And um, so I'm going to try to. And I just randomly flipped through and I was like, wait a minute, this is a really darn good book. Uh, like Damascus, Capital of Syria, the River uh, Barada, Southeast of Beirut, and then goes on and on and on. And, like about, and there's all kinds of stuff here, like Battle of Guise, um, you know, also called Battle of St. Quentin. It's just amazing. I was like, wow. Uh, here's one that's actually going to be going off to Crispy Galactic. Uh, I had a, I had a, um, work, um, you know, just a, like an emergency book to read, if you want to call it that. Um, I absolutely adore these, um, of this series, the very sh short introduction. If uh, you go take a look at whatever, at the list of books that they have in, the, in this series, is just incredible. Uh, this is a really, it's just a good, uh, like I said, I, I really like a very short introduction uh, series. So that's going to go off to uh, Crispy Galactic because he also wanted to um, uh, find out a bit more about the Great War. So there we go. Uh, that's that one. Um, yep, this one I use often. Uh, this is the, uh, the First World War by John Keegan. I would say for me, general reference wise, I like his writing style. Um, Obvious, I think, like when we get off into Peter Hartland and uh, some of these books I've just picked up. I've maybe uh, uh, leafed through them, but, uh, you know, uh, that's as, as much as I can uh, give you kind of thing. It's just I, I saw the books or, um, you know, uh, on the shelves and it's like, you, you got to come home with me. Or, uh, you know, YouTube people or like the uh, Indian Ideal, the Great War uh, channel or Wesley Live, Live Say with the Great War podcast. There, but he always gives out book suggestions at the end. Um, 
anyways, that's where I've been getting some, you know, I'm like, you know, specifically when I go in for the awesome books or what have you. This is a great book. Um, and actually, we just talked a bit about this as well uh, on the live stream because I went into 1916 to take a look. It's interesting, actually. This one here, I was like, what the heck's going on here? Uh, his, the, the first chunk, a uh, massive chunk here of uh, the year battles for 1916 here, John Keegan. Uh, it's all about naval stuff and the Battle of uh, Jutland and all that stuff. I was like, what in the world? Um, what other ones? Yes, I'm just dipping my toes in this one a little bit. Uh, a History of the Great War, I, like, I just uh, haven't even looked at any of the other stuff. This is pretty darn biased uh, from what I can see. Like, it's, it's a lot of, um, you know, the person's, it's, you know, putting in his own flavor. Um, I'm enjoying it. Uh, I, I, I'm finding it mouth-watering, like, the, um, when he got into, like, 1916, right off the bat, he was talking about the diplomatic efforts to stop the war with uh, Wilson's... Um, Colonel House, I think is the guy's name, uh, Colonel Holmes, Colonel House, something like that, uh, who got sent over and they offered this piece, and that's what got me into buying uh, The Road Less Traveled, and I was like, oh, I really want to find out more and more. Uh, like I said, and now we're going to get into areas where I may have had a little smattering, um, but um, I don't know too much, or I haven't really taken a, uh, all that great look of a book. Yet again, uh, Peter Hart, The Great War, I just picked this up. Uh, um, Recommended over and over and over again by Indian I Dale. Uh, no idea what it's like. Uh, well, I should say no. I do know what it's like. Yet again, it's uh, probably going to be something similar to a history of the Great War because uh, uh, when he, especially with Gallipoli, oh my God, uh, he. I think this guy actually does a separate book on Gallipoli. Just eviscerates uh, the British High Command. Holy Jesus, jumping, uh, just massive. Um, yeah, and there's another one I picked up uh, uh, that um, Wardrobe Plays World War II was taking a look at as well um, when he saw uh, my recent book acquisitions. Uh, Max Hastings, Catastrophe Europe, Goes to War. Haven't read it. Doesn't look like somebody else either read it either. Um, it's got some stuff in it. I, I, so like I said, I had, can't, um, I can't, re I, you know, I'm just showing you what I got here. Uh, I will say this, I'm pretty darn sure that there's a YouTube, um, they did a YouTube, oh, well, it's on YouTube now, but I think um, there was actually like a four-part show called Catastrophe, I may be wrong about that. Uh, what other interesting books that I can take a look at? Um, well, you know what, maybe this is what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to grab the thing and then we can go slowly and, uh, from there. Oh, no, we're going to keep that there, then I'm going to go and do the whatever. So I'm just going to show you some of my uh, books of interest that I find right now, uh, and then we can go along the shelves. I think that's maybe the best way to do it, and I can stay out of the way. Um, yeah, I'll show you my coffee table books, and then we'll go from there, uh, because that'll be the easiest. So here's my coffee, t one, co one, co one of the coffee table books I got. So, yeah, that's exactly what I'm using it for. I don't have any, but I, I, they litter the house. You can't go anywhere around this house if uh, without seeing a map or uh, a book. I can tell you that much. So this one's, as you can see, I'm well, maybe there's probably a lot of glare, but uh, oh my God! Did you see that? Did that ever look like uh, the Kennedy kid? Holy Christ! Daddy's regiment there. Jesus! Uh, you know when John F. Kennedy got his uh, head blown off. Uh, and then this one here is another co uh, coffee table book. Um, <laughs> I'll give me bringing that around, I can tell you that much, to the, uh, to the shops to read in the lineup. But uh, look at these photos. They're just monster, monster sized. Uh, and if I had like an 11 by 17 scanner or something, that would be wonderful. And then the Great War, Persu uh, Pers Persuasive Power of Photography. A lot of color images, I do believe. Nope, I thought there was. There was some colorized. Yeah. Well, I'll have to take a look again. All right, now let's go. Yeah, let's just go around along the shelves. I think that'll be the best bit. Okay, hold on here. I'm gonna take a look and see what you said. Um, and it may be a bit jerky here. Hold on here. But and oh, there we go. Yeah, there's um. Lent out a couple of a uh, few other books, uh, such as uh, The Great War in Africa by Byron Farwell, I think. 
Uh, McMurray has read the book, read that book, and highly recommends it. Um, Meandering Mike has it as well. Uh, oh, hold on. My freaking leg is screwed up again. There we go. Like I said, I gotta get a proper, proper, um, tripod. So let's take a look and see, uh, hopefully you guys can see what, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go through it just, but at least maybe you can see the titles. A lot of these are just, I've just picked them up. Like I said, these are just general reference, if you want to call it that. Hold on, I'm going to try and see if I can shut the, the blind. No, that's all right. We'll just go with that. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen some of these things. Yeah, like I said, I'm trying to section it somewhat. I'm still uh, there. Like you know, a lot of these things here, like are, uh, Artillery in the Great War. This, I think, is from uh, Pen and Sword or whatever. Um, you can see, you can see, yeah, there it is, actually. Pen and Sword, you can see at the bottom. But it's got, I like their, um, I like their binding. I like their things. Here's um, some like specific um, battles. I haven't taken a look at that, but I'm trying to yet again pop, put them into some specific bits. Sorry, wasn't looking. Um, bits there. Alexander Watson, The Fortress, great book. Um, about um, about Shemesh. Oh, brother. Well, let's get down to here. First World War posters. I guess that would be more of a coffee table book as well. And then getting into like, well... Yeah, more like personalities and um, maybe some fiction, poetry, uh, plays, that type of stuff. Uh, you can get the idea. Actually, uh, Wilfred Owen uh, came up yesterday on the mornings in my morning lecture or talk um, on uh, the doomed youth. That was it. And I wasn't sure if uh, Wilfred Owen uh, uh, penned that term, uh, doomed youth, or not. So, there we go. I'm going to get down into my, like, Canadiana um, books of the Great War. And then this one I'm reading right now, or just started reading right now. Um, like, I take this to the shops and so on and so forth. Uh, Storm of Steel by Ernst Younger. Holy moly, what a good one. Uh, really, really good. It's, uh, I was saying to the guy at work who uh, was going to uh, lend it to me. I've got my own, like, internal, internal library at work. It's really neat. And, um... Uh, this uh, giant of a man from Bulgaria, Ivan. You should see the size of him. Um, super duper nice guy. And um, he was going to give me that book. I said, Actually, I just started reading it the day before. That was so neat. But it's, uh, and I said to him too, it's a difficult book to put down. The guy is really good. Uh, so here you can see, and I'm getting into like, um, well, you know, machines and whatnot and so on and so forth. And yet again, have not... a. Th I think this is supposed to be a really good one, but I haven't looked at it. And then we're going to get into, I guess, uh, there's the prick boot tire stuff. And uh, actually, this, um, for some of you guys, oh my god. What this guy can do from scratch. And he goes into the, like, shows you how to make, I was just like, are you kidding me? You've got to be joking. Actually, maybe we'll take a quickie look at that one in a minute. Uh, and then this one I'm also using yet again. I think that's another pen and sword. Yep, they're really good. Darn it. They really are. Uh, this one's a fantastic book. Um, yeah, I'm right now I'm using it for um, the second battle of, uh, well, the second battle of Suez, which happens in August of 1916. I'm still having a hard time wrapping my head around that, to be honest with you. Uh, and those two books are not mine. Uh, they're uh, Gwyndyer. Um, he's a Canadian. Um, those are lent out from um, Ivan, uh, the guy. And that is a eBay pickup. My favorite dude, uh, my favorite general, uh, Svetozar Brevich von Bonia. Uh, fan, uh, it, it's just, yeah, it's going to be uh, something I, want, I can't wait to uh, take a good long look at at some point. And then we'll go to here very quickly. Like I said, this is more like a... Um, oh, uh, the Warlords one is about uh, the world's war. That, so that's more of a... Uh, well, taking a look at it from a non-white um, European perspective, essentially. Um, and so these are books that, uh, you know what I mean, like just to scratch my head a bit more, oh, of course the trench warfare, good lord, but uh, to help me kind of like go a bit forward and a bit backward from the uh, the Great War and also like, you know, can, yeah, like, well, you get it, and there's another one, uh, John Keegan, The Face of Battle, uh, it's only I think got the 
Battle of the Somme in it. The rest of them are other battles from history, but um, it's in there because, like as you can see, like even with the warlords here, the military commanders of the 20th century, it's not going to have a lot of. Uh, sorry, not going to have a lot of the. Um, you know, it's just not going to be focused on the Great War, people of the Great War, and then we get down to here, and that'll be that. That I think, um, and then you know my grand uh, grandfather's old uh, dictionary, which is uh, um, priceless essentially, and then my. Sun Tzu book, which is falling apart. I can't wait to get a proper one. That's about it, I think. Hopefully, you guys, um, I did a half decent job. We'll see. I'll, uh, oh, yeah, I wanted to show you the trench warfare. Uh, I mean, modeling World War One trench warfare. Hold on here. Yeah. See a bit of my, the other side of the uh, <laughs> live stream nonsense, I guess. Hold on here. I'm trying to bring her down. I'll try to stay away from the glare. Okay. And then I've got a... Hold on. I'll try to... Stay, like I said, I'll try to stay away from there. There we go. Yeah, I'll just do this quickly. I just wanted to show you because it is incredible. Um, when I was looking at it, I got actually got this at the Canadian War Museum. Um, and it goes through, you can see here, it's not just, um, you know, how to make stuff, but look at this. Can you see that? This guy makes it from scratch. I'm not kidding you. It is like, are you joking? So, um, yeah, useful tips. It's like, wow, wow, wow. Um, it's like a how to, whatever. Um, look at this. See, he, um, the other guy does the painting, I think, and this guy does like all the, uh, Whatever, but uh, it gets to the point where I've seen, uh, is it the front here? The guy's shaving. <laughs> like, good lord. Impressive. Like, it's sometimes, uh, I was actually, I brought this to work, and um, somebody was like, is that a real photo? Like, I, And we had to kind of look at one time, I was like, oh my god, no it isn't. It's that good. So, anyways, that's it. Hopefully, um, this was somewhat useful. Alright, bye.